Welcome to SciPEX, revolutionizing PostgreSQL application development. We're joined by Hans Jurgen Schoenig, CEO and technical lead of CyberTech. We'll discuss SciPEX, a user-friendly tool to quickly build PostgreSQL applications. And today you're gonna to learn about gathering specifications more quickly, building database applications more quickly, how to consolidate hundreds of quote, free roaming Excel sheets and create professional database-driven applications, and moving from Apex to open source faster. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. A little bit about your speaker. Hans has been a PostgreSQL expert and database specialist since the 90s. He's CEO and technical lead of CyberTech, which is one of the database market leaders worldwide and has served countless customers around the globe since 2000. Additionally, he regularly gives training to PostgreSQL on advanced optimization and performance tuning, Postgres for business intelligence and mass data analysis, PostgreSQL replication professional and Linux for PostgreSQL DBAs, just to name a few. So with that, I'm gonna hand it off to Hans. Take it away. So hello everyone. Thank you for, uh, for showing up and thank you for the wonderful introduction. Uh, my name is Hans Jung Schoenig, just call me Hans, it's easier for everybody. Um, today the topic uh, I've chosen is uh, Cypex, which is about uh, rapid Postgres uh, application development. So thank you everybody for, uh, for showing up and, uh, and uh, using your time on this one. So let's get started. Uh, first, uh, just a brief moment about us. Uh, we've been in professional Postgres for over 20 years, so we are absolutely specialized on uh, Postgres and database uh, development. We're doing in-house Postgres development. Uh, we got an international team of database experts. Uh, we're doing all kinds of uh, data-related uh, services in the area of, uh, of Postgres. And uh, Basically, our services include 24-7 uh, support. We're doing high availability, consulting, performance tuning, migrations, etc. And recently, we've also uh, expanded uh, into the area of data science, artificial intelligence, and uh, data mining. Uh, we are quite an international company. So our headquarters are here in Austria, but we also have offices in uh, South Africa, Mauritius, uh, Uruguay, Switzerland, uh, Poland, and Estonia, uh, with more to come uh, very, very soon. So uh, I, I would say we're quite an international company. And uh, yeah, we're doing projects worldwide for some, uh, for some customers uh, you, might, uh, you might know. Uh, including uh, Amazon, United Nations, uh, Nokia, Siemens, Audi, Porsche. Uh, so basically, we are uh, we are in uh, many industries, and uh, so we're eager uh, uh, to show you more if you're in case you're interested. So let's get started with uh, with the topic: uh, eternal challenges in uh, in software uh, development. Uh, Let's consider a traditional software development process, right? So you've got a customer and the customer might have a fairly simple requirement. So it could be some, some simple applications, some forms or something. But the way this works is that the, that the customer is talking to some uh, salesperson, is talking to some key account guy, then it, it, it specifications are written, then there's a project leader and the team leader. And finally, at the end of the food chain, there is going to be some, some developer. But at every step of the way, you're going to lose a lot of information, right? So every time information is passed on from, uh, from uh, one person to the next, um, there's a lot of information loss. And uh, at the end of the day, this is, in many cases, what's going to kill the project. It's not that uh, programmers can't get it done. The question is, uh, what, what is it that they, they, they should be able to get done, right? So information loss is a major, major issue. Of course, people invented uh, more clever project management ideas like Scrum, Agile development, and all kinds of, of stuff. But the problem still remains that every time you are, you are passing around information, you're losing some. 
And uh, if you are only willing to change things after they've been implemented, you already wasted a lot of time on implementation uh, until you figured out that that's actually not what you want, right? So it makes no difference if you're doing agile development or traditional uh, project management. The problem persists because the core issue is really information loss between the customer and developers. So the idea is, what if, just, just imagine for, for a moment, what if a casual conversation would already bring you very close to a prototype? So what if a conversation with instant feedback, with no information loss, would already provide you with some sort of prototype of what you need? Of course, it's not going to be a 10 minutes uh, over the counter conversation, but some some standard interview process. But what 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 if we had this prototype uh, more um, more more instantly? And what if software and prototype development was so cheap that changing doesn't matter? Because in normal software development, when you're talking to the client, you want to take a shortcut, but the client actually wants you know more, you know. So there's always a conflict of interest between the guy who is, is doing something for a fixed price and the other guy who just uh, wants as much as possible. There's always a conflict of interest. But what if this whole development uh, process would be so cheap that changes are not so relevant anymore? It would somehow help to resolve this uh, this conflict of interest, right? So. The Cypix way of development. How, 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 how can we go about it? So the first thing is do it interactively. So if you're talking to your, your client, um, just bring somebody along who is listening in to this, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, conversation, which is, of course, some standardized uh, process, um, and who would instantly turn this into a, into a Cypix model which can then be used basically to predict an application, right? So it's not about having the, the thing ready instantly, but it's, it's basically being fast enough to predict an application, uh, which can then be used in order to gain feedback or which can then be used in order to elaborate, to improve, uh, et cetera, right? So the way it works is uh, you will always need some sort of data model to store your data. If you, if you have customers and the products and prices and price types and price discounts and discount types and, and whatever there might be, at some point you have to store the data, right? So at some point you need a data model that that's going to work. And secondly, at some point you want to work with your data. So you need some sort of workflow, which means that uh, this guy is allowed to write offers, the next guy is allowed to review them, the next guy is allowed to sign them, uh, the next guy is allowed to invoice, etc., etc. So you always need some sort of workflow, which is, of course, uh, <coughs> associated uh, with a permission, right? So person A is allowed to sign the contract, person B is not allowed to sign the contract, but is allowed to whatever, modify it, or whatever it might be. So Basically, if we take the relational model, if we take the workflow and uh, some sort of security, we should be able to predict a crude application out of, this, uh, out of this information. And the key challenge is to make all those components so quick, uh, to create them so quickly, um, that basically you just predict the application, throw it away, predict a new one, throw it away, make some changes, et cetera, et cetera. So, the core idea, as I've stated already, is does a customer have addresses or does it have many addresses? Can offers be changed? Uh, who is allowed to make changes, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're asking all those questions early on in an interactive way, it's a lot better than turning something you don't know into specification, give it to somebody who has no clue who's going to turn it into code and then there are 10 people in between who do nothing but obfuscating uh, what the customer really wants, right? 
at some point you have somebody writing an application about agriculture who's never been on a farm and the project manager managing this project has never seen a farm now all these kinds of, of issues are going to be are going to be there and that's what's causing uh, software projects to fail right so our solution is have a, have some sort of interview process create a clear picture in the client's head so what do i mean by that the other day i was talking to a client in switzerland and I asked them is the price of pork linear and they looked at me as if it was a martian just landed from outer space and said of course it is and they asked them okay price of pork is linear right it was a food company so price of pork is linear so is it true that 1000 pigs are a thousand times more expensive than one pig that would be linear right thousand pigs thousand dollar one big one dollar and they said of course not and he said you just told me it's linear I said, well it is he said well but now you're telling me that the thousand porks are not thousand times more expensive than one pork so what does the price of pork depend on and then he said well it depends if you know the salesperson how many you purchase whatever and if I just had trusted their specification, if I had trusted their word, and they know everything about, about slaughterhouses because they're making billions in slaughtering animals every year, um, they would have gotten one input field where it says price of pork, how many do we want, right? But by having this process more interactive, by showing them directly what that could mean, they're instantly going to tell you, hey, what are you going to do? What, what are you doing here? This is just one input field, but that's not what we want, right? So that's what I mean by instant feedback, uh, by instantly showing them the prototype. It's going to save you so much money because if you have already implemented the linear pork price edit form, and then you, you figure out later that it actually should be 15 forms because it's so complicated which it turned out to be, by the way, um, then everybody's unhappy. It's not just you who is unhappy because you, you obviously put on the wrong price tag. It's the customer being unhappy because he never got what he wants. And in, in the meantime, everybody was fighting each other because there was no common ground. So instant feedback is only possible if the customer can really see something very early on. And this is ideally already while you're doing this initial um, conversation. So what Citrix is basically doing out of this uh, um, interview process, we create a data model, we create a little bit of workflow, then we predict the application, we turn around the laptop and say, is that what you mean? Okay, so the workflow is gonna, uh, gonna translate to buttons and drop downs, et cetera. Uh, static tables are mostly going to be tables on the other side. I mean, there's a lot more to that. We're inspecting the relational model. We're doing some guesswork just to make this as quickly as possible. So it, it's quite an intelligent process. But at the end of the day, it's just take a relational model, add the workflow, predict an application. As I said, it's more complicated, but for the sake of simplicity, that's what it is. So um, to wrap it up here, um, we're basically having an interactive process here, which predicts the application, right? And uh, feedback is king, right? So if we are really, really honest, if I gave you a thousand pages of perfect specifications, no, none of us would get his head around this stuff, even if it was perfect. Nobody's able to fully comprehend and an application described on 1,000 pages. It's just not feasible. So the, the more natural process is, of course, the interactive one. And that's what we're trying to do, right? It's, 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 in reality, we are dealing not with perfect 1,000 pages. We're dealing with 1,000 faulty pages. In addition to that, um, nobody's going to be able to wrap his head around it. So that's, that's how it works. So our process is predict the application, and then start with the modification. So add some pages here, change the menu entries, turn a table into a pie chart, um, 
add a map, adjust some themes, you know, just, uh, and then at some point you have the final uh, product, right? And of course, everything here is interactive. So if you add a page after you have adjusted the theme, right, it's no problem. That's basically uh, what it is. So what's the end product gonna look like? So what we got here is a birthday application, just something simple. So you, you take a couple of uh, people in your company, um, you, you want to record their, their birth dates, and then you draw a pie chart with how old is everybody. You might want some, some, some element that shows you the next birthday. You might have some bar chart with birthdays. And, and what you already see here is uh, an interactive uh, editor, which allows you to just, you know, add, you know, markdown text, images, buttons, Boolean fields. So you can already modify the application uh, the way you want, right? And I've compiled some screenshots of what this might look like. So if we start at, uh, on the top, uh, you might have edit forms, you might have uh, buttons, you can change your menu entries, you can have search fields, you can add pages, you can remove pages. <coughs> Things can be auto refreshing, elements, elements can reference each other, can have dependencies. You can turn uh, URLs into images. You can add charts. You can have expressions like if this field is higher than the other one, you know, make whatever change to the page, etc. So, uh, out of this default rendering, then it's really time for the VCVIC editor to really change it uh, in order to to produce something you want. Uh, recently, uh, meaning uh, two weeks ago. Uh, we added uh, support for uh, GIS data. So we're now able uh, to display uh, geodata. You can, of course, integrate maps. You can draw on those maps. You can uh, show routes on the maps. You can have, you know, show your gasoline stations, show your whatever. So you can do that also with GIS data. And the way we do it is we just uh, treat GIS data as if it was a standard uh, column type um, and just have clever display for that. So if you wanna see what it means, uh, if uh, we've created uh, three simple examples uh, showing basically what you could, uh, what you could do here. So this is actually in um, where I live around the corner here on the right hand side. Um, but you can see here on the top, you can just draw polygons around it. You can zoom in, you can highlight stuff, etc. So you can have a graphical editor, even for geometric data and integrate it perfectly with your forms, with your charts, uh, etc. So we have a clear separation of how you display data. Could be aggregations, could be some sort of time series or whatever. And the way it's really stored on the, on, uh, in the tables, right? So you can have adjustments here. We call it object fields, just in case you wanna, in case you wanna know. Um, so uh, that's, uh, that's basically for the, uh, for the geodata part. So of course we got some couple of tutorials uh, available on uh, YouTube. So in case you want to check it out later, uh, there's going to be some uh, some tutorials. Uh, if you if you're looking for the link and and so on, we can just send it over to you later. No problem. So, solution. What Cybix is going to do for you? Uh, you can work with smaller teams. Smaller teams is perfect because it's cheaper. Um, <coughs> it's important because you don't lose so much information because you don't have to talk to so many people who can eventually lose it. Which leads to faster development. Everything is cloud ready. Uh, Cypix is, is shipped as a container. Actually, it's four containers, but it's, it's containers. Uh, then it's, uh, it's, it's, it's low cost, it's solid. Solid means that it's bug consistent. So if, if something is generated, as long as the generator is okay, uh, you, can, you can be perfectly sure that your application is working. So in other words, you're not, person number 10,000 to implement the calendar. You, you have calendars, you use them, and that's gonna be fine. It's, it's, it should be scalable and it's easy to learn. That's super important. So, Cypex components, uh, we're building up something uh, along those lines here. And as I've told you before, I've been in professional database development for over 20 years. 
So I've done a lot of personal database development and coding, consultancy, Vi literally visited hundreds of clients. And what always, uh, what always bugged me was that I had the feeling that I was spending my life doing the same thing all over again. You know, create a table to store addresses, create a table to store currencies, create a table to store genders, uh, create a table to store units and conversions. Uh, create a table to store customers, create tables to store products and product categories and product variations and, and payments, etc. So each of us who's done database development has created those things all over and over again. And I can tell you, I'm so fed up with it. I don't want to do it. No, I don't want to do it anymore. So what we came up with um, was the idea of ready-made components. So if the client is going to say, okay, guys, we need addresses, right? So why do you want to invent a new address table? It has been done a million times before. So just take an existing one. And in case it needs variations, just modify it, right? So that's the key idea here that you basically have pre-made components of things people really need, like, you know, currencies, genders, purchase processes, uh, credit card logs, uh, audit logs, um, GPS tracks, uh, time series data for sensors and stuff like that. So it doesn't mean that those components are all perfect. It just means that they are ready-made and it's easier to modify them than to just start from scratch all over again and then have those things uh, finally ending up being consistent. So any components um, comes with many advantages. First of all, it's tested, right? Uh, secondly, it's a lot faster. You can get feedback a lot faster. So if you ask the client, do you need addresses? And he says, yes. So you say, okay, let's add addresses uh, as a building block. And then you ask him, is that what you want? And he said, well, we need one more field for something. That's a lot easier than typing it all up from scratch. It's so much better. Fewer bugs, it's more consistent because the addresses are the same everywhere. Um, it's really, really nice. So those are those components. But of course, um, when we're talking about this kind of tooling, uh, as you can see, this is really coming out of a practical need, right? But there's also some, some criticism uh, people are, uh, are throwing at you when you start uh, with this kind of development. And let me try to address some of them. So first of all, a generator cannot do everything. And what I'm saying there is, of course not. So what Typex was used for, uh, was made for, is forms, dashboards, workflow, API automation, displaying stuff, rapid development. That's going to be perfect for 90% of what you're going to need. So. If you're building an application for, let's say, hand, handling a restaurant, 90% of this stuff is going to be stupid input forms, uh, prices, taxes, stocks, um, dashboards, uh, you know, simple stuff. And 10% maybe are super fancy layout pages, super efficient, whatever. And in this case, what we're saying is, okay, let's do 90% with the generator. And the remaining 10%, you just add uh, manual pages and do whatever you want. You can have your spinning airplanes and you can have your rotating gummy bears with uh, video animation or whatever you want. So it's not meant to do everything. It's just meant to, to help you to automate 90% of what you're trying to do, which allows you to focus on what really matters. And that's the remaining 10%, right? Uh, if there are any questions, just just uh, just feel free to ask them. Um, so if there's anything, so it's really meant to be ninety percent, right? Next question: Can it scale? Uh, yes, we can. I think that was quite famous uh, slogan recently. Um, first of all, what Cypex does is out of the database. What we're doing is we're creating uh, an API, and then comes a web server, and at the end of the day, it's rendered. So we've been doing Postgres for 20 years. We know how to scale a Postgres database, right? 
we certainly know how to scale a web server and all the rest is happening on client side right so the client is exposed uh, gets all the uh, knows the api it's rendering the ui it's calling the database functionality we can scale it we make it we can make it highly available and everything so this is going to be perfect right so we can certainly scale it out uh, to to a, uh, to a decent size. Uh, so that's not going to be a concern. So we 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 can address the the deficiencies of full of, uh, full uh, generation because we can always plug in manual code. We can plug in business logic. We can plug in custom pages. Uh, we can scale it out because we can load balance and stuff like that. And we know how to scale Postgres. So. Basically, we can scale uh, every every uh, every layer here. We don't have to scale the, uh, scale the client because it's we don't care. It's it's cross-platform uh, browser. Nginx can certainly be scaled easily. The same is true for the Node.js backend and for and for the API part. And of course, Postgres is as it is anyway, so it, it's no problem at all. The next thing people are usually approaching is uh, security. So security is certainly important, especially in times of, uh, you know, uh, data protection laws, legislation, GDPR, Poppy Act in South Africa, and, and all those uh, regulations. So what we try to do is is to make an uh, to make a tool that is secure by default. So we're building on top of standard components, which don't try to reinvent the wheel. So also we have a consistent security model all across the application. So security actually begins on the database level. So we're setting database permissions, which automatically turns it into a secure API because we're only exposing stuff which is actually visible on the database side. The application is also considered to be secure because it's talking to this uh, to this uh, API that's only going to expose what you are allowed to see. So there's no chance for the client to get anything wrong because you're not seeing it on the API side anyway, by default. Uh, then we've designed it in a way that we can work with all kinds of uh, authentications. We can have local database users. So you're logging in as Joe, right? So you're logging into the application as Joe. In the database, you're going to be Joe, right? Then we have the concept of map users. So suppose you are you have 100 bookkeepers. They're all allowed to do the same thing. So there's a database user called bookkeeper. And then you can map as many logins as you want to those database users uh, and just have 100 logins, which basically all end up as, um, as the specific database user. And finally, we have support for uh, single sign-on, which means uh, uh, LDAP, Active Directory, and whatever you might need. The reason we did that in the first release is that in a big organization, you will always have some sort of uh, centralized user management, single sign-on, or something like that. So we instantly wanted to be ready um, to integrate with, um, uh, with some, uh, some kind of uh, authentication uh, tooling here. So it's there by default. So we, we try to be uh, good citizens by providing uh, secure applications, okay? So security at every level, that's, that's the, the gist of the next slide. So on the database level, we use everything available in the Postgres universe. So we support standard Postgres, we support uh, Postgres DDE, which is uh, encrypted uh, Postgres. Um, which basically stores data on disk in, a, in an encrypted way. Uh, it also works with Postgres Enterprise Edition, which means our Enterprise Edition. You can use row-level security, uh, table permissions, column permissions. You can use everything Postgres has to offer, user management, security barriers, etc. cetera. Um, then on the API level, of course, we can again integrate with Active Directory have uh, all these uh, authentication layers. And finally, in the front end, uh, by default, everything is SSL encrypted. Uh, we try to go for secure design elements, meaning cross-site scripting, et cetera. And then there is automatic library updates. So in case something is lost 
um, we can still uh, be sure uh, that nothing, nothing bad can ever happen. Okay, so we would try to be very focused on this security thing. So finally, finally, efficiency matters, right? So imagine you're in an organization, it has a thousand, it has a thousand employees, and every year you're just able to save 10 hours per person. I mean, just do the math. It's 10,000 hours multiplied by, by any hour, hourly rate. It's going to be a, a, a really significant number, right? So efficiency matters. So if you can just uh, automate a little bit more, it can really, really pay off big time. But our aim is not to just uh, speed up things a bit. Our aim is basically to tackle those 80, 90% of software development, which is pure uh, boilerplate, which is pure repetitive, inefficient, always the same type of development like addresses and, and stuff like that. So we really want to tackle those 90% because the really hard thing has, always has to be written uh, manually. So finally, there are gonna be some, uh, some key learnings here. And uh, what I want to pass on here is really that gathering specifications more quickly matters. And what I'm saying here, gathering specifications more quickly, what I really mean is get customer feedback as soon as you can, because those guys are the only ones who really know what's going on there. I mean, just just uh, rever uh, just going back to my example I, I had before with pork prices uh, for slaughterhouses in Switzerland. I mean, those guys know everything about meat management, everything. The problem is they just don't know it the way you need to know it. They know how to cut it and slice it and whatever. They just don't have it in the form you need. So you really have to show them something they can click on or see or inspect or test so that they can release their wisdom to you. Because at, at, at the end of the day, it's about in information transfer. It's not about writing a button. That's not the problem. It, it's really about what button, where, what is it supposed to do? Let me give you an example. I was talking to a bank the other day and the question was, how many customers do you have? And they gave me a number. And they asked them, what's a customer? How do you count them? Nobody could give me an answer. So everybody knew, okay, we got a million customers, but nobody actually knew what is a customer. If you have two bank accounts, are you one customer? If you just walk into the bank and they have your address and you will open up a bank account next year, are you a customer, right? If you have five companies, how many customers is that if they all belong to you, right? So they didn't even have a clue what a customer is, right? So how can you do software development if you cannot answer those questions in a unified and standard way? Next thing, next key learning is build database applications more quickly, which means faster time to market, uh, faster, uh, faster and cheaper development. Let's just consider this, this COVID situation. I flew to South Africa on 27th of February. I was bush flying for three weeks in Africa. I was flying through Botswana, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, South Africa. I came back on the 18th and went straight into lockdown. Took the last airplane from Dubai and went straight into solitary confinement. So. All of a sudden, within three weeks, the whole world has changed. And imagine you are a government that has to respond with, with government processes within days or weeks, because there's no time. Do you really want to start with a thousand pages of, of, of specification and blah, 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 blah? No, just get going and modify on the fly. You know? That's what you want, right? So speed matters. It's not about, oh, it's cheaper or something. Sometimes it's really about necessity. We need this thing tomorrow, right? So it, it really matters. Next thing is how to consolidate. 
I call them free roaming Excel sheets. So everybody knows that. So something new pops up in a company and what they do is they just create a new Excel sheet and put in data in some strange way and cross-reference Excel sheets. And, and if you move something, everything breaks, etc. Everybody knows that. But everybody's also going to understand that the proper database is, is of course better than some Excel sheets that are floating around, right? So why not just consolidate it, do it in a centralized way? And finally, as Oracle seems to ruin its own market, we want to give people an alternative to, to Apex so that they can do faster development and just make sure that they can get off uh, Oracle better and more quickly. So that leaves me with any questions? So anything I might be able to answer? I'm seeing one from David. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand it. It says, can you gore the stack again? Uh, the stack is going to be uh, Postgres with uh, high availability. So it's uh, it's uh, it's basically Postgres uh, with uh, with Patroni, virtual IPs, and stuff like that. Then we're talking about some uh, database logic, which is enforcing workflows, uh, user management, etc. So there's um, uh, Postgres uh, um, um, as a as a foundation with high availability, meaning uh, Patroni, v VIP manager, stuff like that. And then comes some server side. Uh, Postgres code, which is fully cloud ready. So there is no extension uh, that is not uh, available on, on, on some public clouds. We just try to go as off the shelf as we can. Then it's going to be uh, automatic API generation, which is coming as a container. So there is a Node.js and uh, Postgres. And at the end of the day, so what you see in the client is basically an application that renders a configuration coming from the server uh, using uh, React. And of course, there's uh, backup tooling and, and Docker and, 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 and stuff just to put it into Kubernetes and, and things like that. So that's, that's, the, that's the stack. Uh, does it uh, sufficiently answer your question? I hope it does. Let's give everyone a minute to, to type if they need to type. Um, otherwise, this was really, really thorough. I hope it is. So as you can see here, there's a lot of GS stuff uh, coming along. And of course, we are uh, extending those, um, those uh, components. We're uh, improving more on the security side. We're adding more features to the state machine. Uh, we were doing uh, more on the model builder side, etc. How much does it cost for four cores? Uh, maybe you can just send me an email uh, and uh, we can discuss the requirements and I can give you a price because I have to like, look it up my, on my, myself because that's, that's going to be a marketing issue. So maybe you can just uh, send me an email here. Uh, so that's going to, I can get you a price for that. So, any more questions? That is all I'm seeing come through. It was really thorough. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, You're welcome. Everyone now has Hans's email address. Um, so, any further questions, you can either um, send them straight to the Postgres Discord channel or email Hans. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, we, we've ended early today. Um, give everyone back about 15 minutes of their day. So thank you so, so much, Hans. This was, this was fascinating. This was a joy to watch. Um, and even I learned something. Um, to everybody on the line, thank you so much for joining us as well, giving us a part of your day. Uh, so regardless of where you are, if it's morning, afternoon, or evening. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and um, I hope to see you on future Postgres conference webinars. So cool. Thank you. Have a nice day.